Hello, right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to AEW Discussion. I'm your host in AEW Enthusiast, Doug Doug. In today's episode, I'm going to be discussing that in my May, June 7, 2023 episode. So on this episode of Dynamite, Orange Cassidy will be putting up the International Championship once again and another grueling title defense. And also, uh, in this episode, we found out who MJF's next challenger for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship is. And with that, we're going to get right into the action, starting with said... Uh, international Championship match, Orange Cassidy versus Swerve Strickland. So Cassidy overcame a game Strickland here and once again proved his toughness fighting through a late match attack on his head and neck to seize an opening and used the tights in the same way as Challenger had moments earlier. A post-match beatdown brought out Sting and Darby Allin and it appears that those two uh, will be teaming alongside Cassidy and renewing their rivalry with uh, Swerve. Doing so, uh, yeah. So this was a good match between two guys with momentum on their side. In the finish, a big Gary Gary went protected with Strickland and events the story that Cassidy is continuing to feel the pressure and the pain with every passing title defense. The last two or so months have proven that uh, starting starting to show off with a title defense from Marsh Cassidy, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, it's a pretty good way to start the show and this is another solid opener and another solid title defense for Cassidy whose reign continues. Uh, trios match, Chaos vs Blackpool Combat Club, so BCC would get the win here, essentially shrugging off everything the opposition threw at them before putting them putting their before putting their opponents away decisively. The post-match challenge by uh, Hangman and uh, Young Bucks for a tag team match on next week's show sets up a high profile match that probably will be the main event and continues the uh, war between the BCC and the Elite. Beyond that, this was a nice way to introduce the AW Faithful to the upcoming uh, match between Ryan Danielson and uh, Okuda from New Japan Pro Wrestling. So that match is being uh, labeled as a dream match and I don't know much about Okuda, um, I don't know much about this being a dream match, but if everything I'm hearing is correct, then, then this is probably rightly considered a dream match um and booking the rainmaker rainmaker whose faction consists of i think i don't know but i can't remember if his faction is called chaos or the member of the trio that is chaos as a part of his faction but nonetheless betting uh booking the rainmaker's faction against uh the bcc is a great way to uh start up the feud or the program between danielson and akuda which uh will continue to shape in the coming weeks ahead of Forbidden Door on June 25th. Um, and then MJF contractually obligated to appear on Dynamite, which honestly every time I hear that it's just hilarious. Uh, but uh, this promo segment here was interrupted by Adam Cole, and for those who like uh, insider digs or nice little callback, callbacks to uh, things that were said online, uh, this probably this probably was an enjoyable promo segment and hits a little bit harder uh, whereas it'd be like traditional promos that you know try to build up a story and establish a real issue between two competitors outside of general dislike well yeah you probably didn't like this promo segment if you like the traditional stuff i thought this was a pretty solid promo segment uh mj update kind of spiced it up a bit admitted that he was a fan of adam cole but i think going forward there might be a bit more of a need to kind of add a bit more meat to this rivalry right now um there's no water but there is some bread and not enough meat so i think we can cut down on the bread and get some more meat in here i think this would certainly help um or certainly do some good for the feud uh still overall solid segment but like most of the promo segments with mjf recently it went on longer than you need it when you have one person i think you can wrap it up in five minutes but when you have two i'd say keep it to 10 minutes max um, so maybe try to keep something in mind. I don't exactly know how long this one went on, but it certainly did go on for a bit longer than it needed to, but still didn't get set enough this feud. Um, and, uh, yeah, moving on from that to the main event, Ricky Starks versus coming this match suggests that Starks, uh, will go off and battle the guns in some form of fashion. Um, I don't know who he's gonna find for a tag team partner. Um, but I guess that's what he's doing. He lost here to Jay White, and rather than not having any direction, he's got some semblance of direction for better or for worse. Meanwhile, Jay White uh, will now uh, wrap up his feud with Starks with a win and move on to uh, the uh, 
few that was, or the program that was teased, I think, last week, uh, where him and Juice Robinson challenged up the R for the tag titles. That, oh, why exactly Tony Khan and the AW Rest think that stars really best utilize the field with the guns is, well, a question that only Tony Khan and the AEW Brass can answer. Um, I don't think there is a good answer for that. I think Starks is certainly better than that. Uh, he's a talented performer who should be doing more than just heating wide up for a run at the tag titles. Um, and certainly he's above a feud with the guns, no disrespect to the guns, but it just doesn't seem like a fair use of Starks. As it stands, Switchblade picks up a big win and now sets his sights on a momental team with Robinson and Samoa Joe to take on CM Punk and FTR. A moment that should a match that should bode well for him as he continues to find his footing in AEW. So there's a lot happening in AEW at the moment. Uh, maybe a bit too much, but so far Tony Khan has done a solid job of differentiating um, what is happening on collision he already announced the main event um in a very robotic fashion you can tell he's not comfortable on camera that's not a shot but i don't know if, if speaking on camera is not really a thing during a live show maybe get somebody else to do it. nonetheless he made the announcement for collision and he's also kind of making some he's already got a couple matches announced for forbidden door kenny omega versus paul osprey for the iwgp united states heavyweight championship and then brian danielson versus akuda um so yeah he's done solid job differentiating what's going on for collision versus what's going on for pretty door and this show certainly added some credence to that uh the main event was centered on promoting the main event for collision uh danielson and kuda's account of forbidden door was previewed at the same time that blackpool combat's club feud of the elite continues by way of a tag team match next week or a trios match next week and there was the opening promo in the feud between mjf in the program between mjf and adam cole that could either be a headline bout for forbidden door or even all in um i don't know if they want to stretch it that long um I think Forbidden Door is a pretty good spot for it. Um, I, I I don't see how it could work for all and that might be a bit of a stretch. But Tony Khan is not afraid to stretch things out for longer than they should. So I suppose that's probably why it's a, a, a possibility or an impossibility coming up. Uh, nonetheless, there are plans in place and direction for top stars are clear. The question, um, as is usually the case with AEW, is whether things will stay on track long enough to get to the the station um, in a way that keeps the fans excited and invested, rather than you know looking for a, looking for a way off the train so to speak so aw's got some good momentum going on right now towards the forbidden door station now it's just a matter of trying to keep people on the tr on the well maybe train's not a good metaphor maybe ship maybe you know right they got they got the course set the ships are moving now you just gotta keep people on the ship and not give them a reason to jump ship like you did with double or nothing granted i didn't jump ship for double or nothing i still watched it but I would certainly understand if some people felt like felt frustrated by how Double or Nothing was put together and ultimately decided to kind of jump ship. Uh, but I mean, so far so good for her prison door. Uh, this week's show was a hit. It gave fans something to be excited. Uh, gave fans something to be excited about in the future and highlighted some key players that will carry the company through the summer. And with that, we'll go and wrap up this episode of AEW Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button down below.